these are some of the deadliest snakes in the world. In rural areas, their camouflage makes them hard to see. Their venom causes severe bleeding, paralysis or tissue damage. Without quick access to anti-venoms, their victims can be permanently disabled or die. That's why scientists here at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine are working with the Nigerian Ministry of Health to develop cheaper and safer anti-venoms. So just gently pin his head down, get him by the back of the jawbone, offer him up to the beaker. You can see he's flicking his tongue out. There we go, good amount. This is one of Nigeria's deadliest snakes, a saw-scaled viper. It's thought it kills more people than any other African snake. Right now, this dangerous procedure is the essential first step for making antivenoms. It's an expensive and complex process. The cost of antivenoms has been rising sharply for the past 20 years. The amount of venom that we've just extracted now is sufficient to kill a human being. Paul Rowley knows all about snake bites. He's the only person in the UK licensed to extract snake venom for medical research. It's a risky job. Being bitten by a snake really is painful. Um, last time I was bitten was by a juvenile rattlesnake and I had a lot of swelling and intense pain. Um, I felt like my arm was broken. Paul was given anti-venom and it saved his life. But like nearly half of people treated, he suffered a serious adverse reaction. A week later, I, I took ill again due to the effects of the antivenom, and they actually wanted to readmit me to hospital because um, it was quite a serious situation. The team at the Liverpool School are developing a completely new approach. By separating out only the most toxic parts of snake venom, they hope to produce cheaper treatments that don't have such severe side effects. Venom consists generally of about 200 different proteins. The problem with this is that a lot of those proteins are not particularly toxic. And so we rationalise that if you make an antivenom which is specific only to the toxins, you won't need as much of the antivenom to affect cure. It's always so explosive, this panel. This puff adder, with its large hollow fangs, produces an especially toxic venom. The Liverpool team is working to identify the genes that produce only the most dangerous toxins in this and other snakes' venom. Stitched together to create a synthetic sequence, they are then inserted into lab bacteria. These tiny biological factories produce the vital proteins repeatedly, a much safer process. If we're successful, we will generate a, a pool of antibodies which, when combined, will neutralise the main pathological toxins of all the venoms of all the deadly snakes in one region. They're currently testing the effectiveness of a new antivenom designed to work against all African saw-scaled vipers. Preliminary results are due in the next few months, but it will be several years before it can be manufactured in bulk. Until then, making antivenom will remain very risky even in the hands of seasoned professionals. So Paul's brought in a spitting cobra from Nigeria now. Um, it's in this trap box. So these are one of the larger animals in our collection. And they spit, and so we've got to be quite careful with this one. Here she comes. A synthetic anti-venom can't come soon enough. That's how bad it can go sometimes. 